store or data source and pull that data from an existing database, including both the schema and the data. This way I'm going to populate staging with the data from development and then send it to the store staging separate database. This is all going to happen as part of that publish process. I'll switch my build to staging. I've got my publish on staging. And then I'll just click the publish web. We'll do a build and publish off to staging. Publish started. Publish succeeded. Now I'm going to fire up the site. We'll take a look. Notice that we're not on local host anymore. We've deployed the site from scratch. And I'm going to go and buy a couple more red ones just to get that handled. Pain-free deployment, easy configuration, one-click publish, all in Visual Studio 2010. So you've seen ASP.NET 4 with ASP.NET MVC 2. You've seen jQuery. You've seen the jQuery templating engine. You've seen jQuery IntelliSense selectors support at every level, whether it be multi-monitor or IntelliSense. No matter whether the, what the client is or what the server is, with Visual Studio 2010, you get the most complete developer experience. We're trying to make it easier for you to find and you to use your code. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. So as you saw in uh, Scott's demo there, uh, you used jQuery pretty extensively. You saw a lot of the great tooling support that we have for it now. Uh, we've been big fans of jQuery for uh, several years now. Uh, about 18 months ago, uh, we started uh, shipping jQuery as part of the ASP.NET MBC project uh, and uh, also began offering Microsoft product support uh, so that you can get official Microsoft product support when using jQuery on our servers. Uh, since then, we've been working uh, pretty hard to, to provide even more support for jQuery. Uh, last year, we started offering jQuery through the Microsoft Ajax CDN, so you can take advantage of our caching servers around the world in order to get jQuery even faster within your applications. Uh, as you saw also, we made pretty big in investments in VS 2010, both improving IntelliSense, but also including jQuery as well in all new web forms as well as MVC projects. Uh, I'm excited today to talk about kind of the next level, the next step of our investments uh, in terms of making jQuery even better, uh, and uh, to be able to talk about uh, the fact that we're now going to be start making code contributions to the jQuery project, uh, as well as providing QA and testing resources uh, to make it better. And that templating library, well, uh, that templating library that uh, Scott uh, just showed off uh, is an example of kind of an experimental jQuery plugin uh, that we're contributing uh, to the community, um, and uh, been working with the jQuery. Uh, community on uh, to get feedback and hopefully make better. And we think this is good for not only developers using Microsoft uh, web products, but hopefully better for the broader web community as well. So we're pretty excited about this. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is invite John Rezig, who's the uh, creator and founder of jQuery on stage, uh, to talk a little bit about jQuery and some of the work we're doing together. <laughs> Uh, so thank you, Scott, and thank you, everyone, uh, for having me here today. Um, so I'm really excited to be working with uh, Microsoft here on uh, improving uh, jQuery. jQuery's been around for a while now. I released it back in uh, January of 2006. It's a pure JavaScript library, uh, completely open source. Uh, it's, we, we work very closely with the Software Freedom Conservancy, a nonprofit, uh, to host uh, the jQuery project. And all this code is released and out there in the open, and we're very happy that uh, Microsoft has really uh, taken the opportunity to uh, embrace it and, uh, and work with us uh, to uh, create an excellent library. Um, we're really excited, especially since uh, jQuery is growing quite strongly. Uh, according to uh, builtwith.com, uh, we see jQuery has about a 30% a uh, market share amongst uh, all websites on the internet. So we're, uh, we're really quite excited. So uh, Microsoft uh, has been uh, working with us, uh, as uh, Scott mentioned, over the past couple of years now. And uh, we, we talked and we saw a couple areas of uh, mutual interest, uh, such as uh, templating, uh, doing dynamic script loading with uh, dependency management, and also ways of doing uh, data binding. So we decided to uh, start experimenting and working with them on uh, an experimental uh, templating plugin, as uh, Scott demoed. And this is something that uh, we've been working on and collaborating on in the open with the rest of the jQuery community. It's all been uh, documented and discussed uh, on the jQuery forums. And we all, we've been developing uh, using the, the traditional jQuery development process up on uh, GitHub. 
So again, we're really excited to have uh, Microsoft on board, having them uh, contribute uh, code back to the project, and we're really looking forward to uh, continuing to work with them. Thank you. So we've talked a lot about features and technology. I want to shift gears slightly now and talk about uh, some of the work we're doing to make it uh, easier to get started uh, with the Microsoft Web Platform. Last year at Mix, uh, we introduced a, a new um, download that we call the Web Platform Installer. And this is a small download uh, that you can install on any version of Windows and makes uh, installing and getting a production server or a development machine really easy to get up and running um, uh, and fully configured. And over the last 12 months, uh, so you can get all of the, the projects and, and uh, downloads uh, that we ship, uh, whether they're extensions or core products uh, like IS, ASP.NET, and Visual Studio. Uh, and over the last 12 months, we've had more than 10 million downloads of it uh, and sort of uh, seen that it's, it's dramatically reduced the time to get up and running and started. Last year at Mix, we also introduced the Web Application Gallery. Uh, the gallery contains free and open source applications uh, that you can run on top of our stack. Uh, this includes not just .NET applications uh, like .NET Nuke, and Brocco, uh, and Screwtune and Wiki. Uh, it also includes uh, popular PHP apps like WordPress, Drupal, uh, and Joomla. Uh, and uh, later at this conference, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a new open source project that we're sponsoring called the Orchard Project, uh, which is a uh, lightweight CMS and blogging engine uh, built on top of ASP.NET MVC2. Um, all uh, delivered under open source, and there's some great talks tomorrow that you can learn about that. The great thing about the application installer in general is that it uses uh, the uh, web platform installer uh, to install um, uh, the applications. And that means that it, it packages up all the dependencies that an application has on a server and can automatically pull down those dependencies, install them, and configure them for you. And so if you have an application uh, through the web application gallery that uses a IS and ASP.NET and SQL, we'll pull down those products for you automatically can configure them, we can even provision your database schema. So it makes it really easy to get started uh, and uh, build up a site. In addition to helping people from a technology perspective, uh, we also now have two programs uh, you can take advantage of, uh, which makes it easy to launch businesses and uh, build up a successful uh, product base um, on top of our uh, platform. Uh, and specifically, we have a, a website Spark program that we launched a few months ago. Uh, this is available to any web developer who builds websites on behalf of others. So whether you're an individual or belong to a company with less than 10 employees, you can join the website Spark program. This gives you access uh, to uh, Visual Studio, uh, Expression Studio, a couple copies of Windows Server and SQL Server that you can use for production deployment at no cost for three years. And there's no obligation at the end of the three years to buy anything, uh, but basically we want to give you an opportunity to build up a business um, using the products, uh, and then if you still like them at the end of three years, you can purchase them. We also have the BizSpark program, which is available for startups and also makes it super easy uh, to get started without having to pay anything up front uh, and without having to uh, incur any cost obligations while you're trying to grow your business. And again, both of the programs are no obligation. At the end of three years, you don't have to buy anything. Um, and uh, uh, if you haven't checked them out, highly recommend you take a look at them. To kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of their success that they've had with the BizSpark program, uh, I'd like to invite Michael from Curse.com on stage uh, to talk about how they're taking advantage of it to grow their business. So, thanks, Michael. Thanks. Hi. So people that walk outside of our office often stare at our sign, raise an eyebrow, and ask me, what is Curse? Curse is all about online gaming. If you've played MMORPGs, you probably know who we are. If you haven't played these types of games before, we think you will soon. So about a year ago, uh, Microsoft invited us to join the BizSpark program. This program has given us access to free server licenses and development tools, which have really helped grow our business. So one of the challenges we face as a company is meeting the demands of a business with exponential growth. Each month, Curse attracts nearly 8 million unique users and delivers a quarter of a billion page views. You know, as a web company, this is a great problem to have, right? 